Oh, R.I.P. Present, man. R.I.P. Present. Legendary um, London-based streetwear store or fashion store or menswear fashion store for the most part has suddenly and abruptly ceased trading. Now, I don't know what's happening there. I guess um, there must be something happening with the company, maybe finances, maybe the lease was up, maybe the landlord um, bumped up their rent, you know, 10 times what it was. I don't know what's happening, but Present is no longer around anymore, man. It really came out of the blue. I haven't been to Present in a while, so I probably that's probably why I don't know any inside information because I, I knew a couple of people they used to work there and stuff and people are in and around who are associated with it so um but i guess from the outside looking in i would say it has something to do with the rent something to do with the lease because that location like presents on now has turned into probably one of the most you know the biggest hot spots like in maybe east london for the most part um I, f I remember when it first launched or when it first was founded that area wasn't as popping as it was now nowadays on any given weekend you know it's fucking teeming packed with people just across the road ace hotel is fucking packed people going in there to have a drink going in there to have a bit of a dance the pubs next door to it dragon bar the one a bit further up the blue one i've got what the name is next to the bus stop is always rammed the restaurants on the other side on the right hand side it's just an incredibly busy street and i guess if you're a retailer if you're a brand if you're a store it's a prime location for you to do whatever you want i'm hoping it doesn't end up being a fucking brew dog pub like um what they turned birthdays into right birthdays are like an institution in east london one of the best bars to go to especially for hip-hop indie kind of acts music you wanted to go see kind of like a an in-between place with uh, kind of like the new version of the old blue last it felt like birthdays was right a nice little bar to go to that a great little burger restaurant at the t um, on the top floor you can sit down have a burger and chill out just a great place you know and end up kind of you know that end up going away and now you've got a brew dog pub in there just like you know just it, that is the sign of gentrification if ever i saw one so you're hoping the space gets taken up by somebody good but it's probably not going to happen but again it's another nail in the coffin for menswear stores in london by and large um we haven't really been blessed uh since most of the stores have been closing recently we've had these big big you know um i'd say dot com online stores like end clothing opening up shops here and there but they had they never really had the they never really had the same feel as some of the legendary london stores one of the places that you'd necessarily go to to go hang out to go chill speak to friends see what's new in store they didn't necessarily have the same buying um experience or taste as some of the stores that present has some of the best brands in there and i don't know man it's just a sad space to be a, a fan of streetwear or menswear in general in london I know for myself, I don't necessarily buy things in physical stores anymore, so I'm not necessarily bemoaning the fact of not being able to buy stuff. But what I come from, I come from a school, a line of uh, people who uh, went to stores not only to buy stuff, but went to stores to go and connect with your local community, right? Most of our things that we do in streetwear or in menswear are kind of relegated to the screen. Everything is online, right? Whether it's kind of buying stuff, whether it's finding out what's dropping, getting inf inside scoops, looking at lookbooks, line sheets, all online. The only time we get to suddenly go and touch and feel stuff is when they come in store and sometimes you know you just want to go to a store to touch and feel what's coming in you you want to go and connect to some friends that are also into what you're into and you know just just to connect and build a community because we didn't really have that especially but most of it is based online i guess for the most part if you're a kid and out, if you're a kid and you don't really like streetwear because i think for streetwear has a good community into it right for the most part around it whether you're queuing outside supreme whether you're queuing outside foot patrol whether you're buying a plethora of shoes at Dover Street Market. It feels like streetwear has a, a bit of a community. Most of it is a, it's reseller based, it seems like, and I don't know how much, how friendly those resellers are nowadays. I know when I used to buy shoes, resellers weren't the most friendly people in the world. They were just, you know, they were basically assassins that came in with a card and just bought up the entire size of a shoe and flipped it in the same day. But I guess inside the reseller community, it probably is community, there's probably quite a good little scene there. But outside of that, menswear stuff, where are you going to connect to people that you like, like the same sort of stuff, right? What ends up happening is that you end up going to a bar somewhere in East London. You end up seeing somebody wearing an amazing Capital jacket that you know he knows you. He knows you know what it is, but you don't talk to each other. You just give yourself a little head nod. But you, you want to connect. You want to find out who that person is. You might end up being mates. You might end up swapping some stuff. You might end, you might end up giving you some information on where to get stuff. A stockist that you don't know about. A little undercover stockist that has all the size runs that um, all the fucking ASAP Rocky people haven't bought. Like you don't know what what could happen when you meet people in real life. But you know when you take that away with we'll like present with the iconic bench that they have featured here it's just an upsetting state of affairs um and the, the post says present london has ceased trading thank you for your customer support over the years and just like a general statement here same sort of thing uh to all our customers thank you for your support over the years if you have any customer service related questions you can still reach us on our link below my link in bio fucking hell man horrendous right horrendous state of affairs and i just hope going forward the new generation kind of forge a way of somehow 
um, melding together these brand um, physical stores with an actual online presence somehow or the other. It's not going that direction. It feels like most brands, especially the internet brands out there who are selling stuff on Shopify and all that malarkey, tend to kind of steer towards pop-up stores to kind of, you know, get a quick buck or to maybe, you know, again, to try and harness the community that way. But I hope going forward, we do see more streetwear kids coming up. And instead of being infatuated about working at Nike, or getting free shoes. I hope some kids are coming around nowadays with a passion. Again, I don't have the same passion for streetwear or for menswear I did maybe in the past. So it's not something that I would necessarily want to do. But for the kids out there that are still really involved and are spending, you know, the majority of their money on clothes and they're going out in places and they're trying to find a new sports, they're traveling to New York, they're going to Japan. I hope those kids get inspired and try and make and try and kind of carve their own bit of history and do their own stores. Because I think honestly, hideout. Um, even though in the beginning those guys were fucking cunts to me in the beginning when I went in, but you know, it got better over the time. Bond International, same sort of thing. Um, all these stores, they really played a big role in who I am today. Um, my education, my social group of friends, my taste, my interests, music, uh, literature. Like it's unparalleled how much influence they've had on me as a kid growing up and being infatuated in the scene. Because back then, if even, even now to some certain extent, you can't find everything out via the internet. Sometimes you don't really learn that well over the internet either. You could read an entire bio about double tax, but you don't necessarily, you won't necessarily know anything about Tetsu. Um, um, um at all right but sometimes going to a store and going to a store opening or a capsule launch if you if, if imagine, imagine if tech came to london to launch a particular collection that he's selling right and you got to talk to him or you got to see him in real life or you got to see people involved around double taps you got to see how small the team was you got to see what they did there maybe was a, a q a session those things are so invaluable to how you grow and how you learn the industry and the things that and if and it also contributes to what you might end up doing in the future you might end up discovering you know what i might instead of being a instead of being a brand owner i want to be um I want to be, um, I don't know, um, what's this thing called? Um, I want to be an agency that kind of, you know, uh, buys in some of this stuff. I want to act as an agency that people can come to and say, hey, here's the brands I have. I want to be a, a showroom director. I want to be an agent. Um, I want to be a stockist. I want to be a merchandise. And there's loads of things that you can kind of educate yourself on if you go to these stores and actually speak to people involved in it. You don't necessarily always need to be in the front line. You don't need to always be the, the person there, right? You could just be the cool guy at managing the shop that sits on the bench out, outside smoking a cigarette. That's an, also an integral part of the fucking scene. Super, super integral and i'm hoping going forward we see more brands doing the same thing um again as a sad state of affairs um again i'm um, r.i.p to present and um hope the people that work there formerly the people that work there still was those trading are able to bounce back on their feet because i know how it is to you know suddenly have a job and then not have it anymore because of things outside of your um control so again r.i.p present you're you'll be gone but not forgotten and then a legendary store with some legendary characters associated with it in around it for those that you know those that know know um yeah so r.i.p present gone but not forgotten next on the list here what do we have da, 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 da. oh the 13 best stop talking about stores i just list us online of the 13 best london sneaker and streetwear stores i haven't watched it all i watch, quickly scan through it. it looks a bit wanky but let's watch it anyway and see what they say i'm sure it's not going to be as good as i'm hoping it's going to be but again you know let's see what the new talking about new generation right about what's happening out there what are the kids buying where they're buying it at i want to see what's going on here so let's watch this video and see what the kids are doing gets off the screen take this off take this off because again you want i don't know man I really, I love going to stores and seeing stuff, man. I didn't want to, you know, and again, anyway, hold 